Hi there! If you're watching this video, you probably already saw my tutorial on the box and lid from a single sheet of paper designed by Anna Kastlunger. If you haven't, do head over there now and check it out. Now, in this video, I'm going to share five tips on how to make that box even more awesome. And here's tip number one, use pretty paper. For example, look at this paper box that I folded from some printer paper. And then look at this one. Doesn't it look so much more gorgeous? And this is printer paper too, but I painted it with acrylics before. And I've even got a video on one method on how to do that. But of course you could also use other ideas like these paint splatters, ink actually, on some printer paper or this orange on also printer paper, so you really don't need much. Of course, there's also pattern paper available that's readily made. For example, these patterns really make the box um, very different and give them a special feel so that you can customize it to the taste of the person that you might want to give it to. So that's tip number one, use pretty paper. Tip number two is use cardstock. If you want a very sturdy box, try using very thick paper and it makes the box really, really sturdy. Now, one thing I will notice if you're using quite thick material like cardstock, it might be difficult to close the lid all the way without this paper kind of bending in. And I have a trick for that too. So for that, we're just quickly going to take apart this model up until this stage and then you can see you have these creases that start in these points down here and they go up straight. Now if you fold it straight with thin paper the box should easily close both with the lid on the outside and the inside. But if the paper is thick it needs more space and in that case you can fix it by deciding do you want to have the lid inside or outside. Now if you want the lid to fit inside, this lid needs to be a bit narrower. So you're going to start a crease in this point again, but you're going to slant it so that it goes slightly inside on both sides. So that when you fold this you still catch the corner and you fold it in and you will see a slight white gap here. If you want it to fit outside the box, it needs to be a bit wider and then you slant it to the outside. So again, you start a crease in the point and then when you crease it up here, you will see a slight corner. And you really don't need much, but play around with it a bit and try. Also, as you can see, it's really easy to collapse the box, perhaps for transportation. Like this, it's flat and then you can simply fold it back together just with a couple of moves and your box is all done again. And that is the second tip about using cardstock and also making it easy to transport. I kind of snuck in a second one in there. Tip number three is a really really quick one and that's if you want to give away the box lock it by taking out this corner right here, unfolding it, same on the other side, then closing the lid again and tucking inside underneath that extra layer with the color change. And then you've got a nicely locked box. Tip number three, quick and easy, but really useful for presents. Now, tip number four is again about changing the visuals of the box. As you can see here, even in the closed state, you can see that color change. So how did I achieve that? Well, it's quite easy actually. Say this is your pattern paper. Now you're going to fold in, before you start with anything, the section that you want the color change to be. So this is the height, that's the height. And then you flip it over and now you fold in less. And that's quite important, so it's not quite as high. Like this, so you can see this is much wider than that. And in the end 
when you continue folding now, you'll see that extra strip showing. So you'd just now fold and then you can go back to this stage and follow the tutorial from here where you kind of take apart the layers and start folding the rest of the sequence to get this nice effect. Now what happens if you actually do it the other way around where this section is not as high as that section of the lid's height? Well, in that case you will simply have the lid cover that color change and a bit more. And that might be useful if you're using very contrasting colors and you want to ensure that you don't see that color change even when the lid is closed. Here you can see just a slight little bit of purple and you can prevent that by first folding in less here, more here and then proceeding as before. I think it's really fun and I especially like this version where you have the color change even with the closed lid. So that's tip number four. Try changing the height of not just both of them, but each of them individually to get those extra special effects. And tip number five is really the longest tip of all and that's the different paper ratios. Now, you might want to fold a box from some printer paper and if you go ahead and use it in portrait mode you're going to get a box with these dimensions and if you're going to move it over to landscape mode you're going to get a very long box and this might be nice if you want to store some pens or perhaps give away a necklace or a bracelet or something like that but of course you might also want to get that special square box. And I'm going to share um, right in a minute a method on how to get a perfectly square box. But before that, I also wanted to note that you can see here, this is a longish box. This is kind of more long than it is deep too. And same here. This box actually works best if you want a box that's longer than it is deep because of these flaps you've got inside here. If you use paper that's even narrower then you will have to fold back a corner here so that both of these flaps fit inside the box. So I recommend to actually not use um, paper that is very very narrow because you'd have to fold back and forth a lot of times. Ideally the paper would have dimensions that are, well, not narrower than two by three, basically, because then you can very easily achieve a square box. But of course, you can try it out and do that back and forth folding method. Now for a perfectly square box, let's look at the crease pattern to really find out what's going on. Now, if we unfold this completely, you will see that you have four squares on the long side and three on the short side as well as the two strips. So if you were to use a paper with a ratio of three by four plus whatever extra overlays you want, so twice this distance because you have one in the top and one in the bottom, then you can get a square box. But it's really quite difficult to cut perfectly, especially because you don't quite know how wide to fold this except when you're measuring. So that's why now I'm going to share with you a method how to achieve that with just folding. And I'm going to start with a sheet with dimensions of two by three. So for example, you could do uh, four inches by six inches or 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. And then we're actually going to start as before by folding edge to edge and creasing. And now we're going to also fold thirds along the shorter side. And for that, I'm just going to use that easy cheat of aligning these edges until they're about the same width, pinching and then creasing to that pinch and same on the other side. And here you can already see that one third of this width is going to be 
the width of that box and the height and the depth of course too. Now we need to ensure that we have the right height for that latch and that overlap here and for that we're first going to start a crease right in this point here and go only up to the first third, same on the other side and then we're going to make a crease that goes exactly through those two points so that we're basically forming squares there. So you can see here now we have squares here with a diagonal. Now we're going to fold behind this top section, fold this back up and then fold it down so that the edge we create aligns with that lower edge. And that creates the height of the color change. And then we can unfold that again and fold it like this. And now rotate it so that we can see that one folded strip already. Uh, we can proceed with the same folding sequence as in the tutorial. And I'm just very quickly going to walk through it so that you can see it really works. But for details, simply watch my tutorial where I explain it in more detail. And there you go, your completely square box is all done. So I hope you enjoyed those five or perhaps a couple more tips on how to make that box by Anna Kastlunger even more special. And I'd love to hear from you in the comment section which tip you like most. And if you have your own tip, do share it with everyone. That would be absolutely grand. And a couple more pointers here. First, of course, if you haven't folded the box yet, do head over to my tutorial on it. And I've got a video on how to use acrylics to make printer paper look extra special. And finally, I was talking about paper ratios of 2 by 3 and 3 by 4 and something. If you don't quite know what I mean by that, I've also got a video where I explain more about paper ratios. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, do give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next videos. You can also visit my website happyfolding.com for more origami content and as always I do hope to see you around and happy folding!